Father, thank you so much. Thank you for the opportunity to study, the chance to understand you, and the chance to be heard by you. We know that that is emphasized a lot because we all want to be heard. We all have something to say. But today, we want to understand better how we are to hear you, how and when and why you're trying to talk to every single heart, whether we are 7, 13, 18, or 100, you're reaching out to us now. And so please connect with us as we open the word in your name. Amen. 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 Well, today, girls, and those of you who are joining us online, we're talking about hearing the voice of God. But really, we really want to listen to and think about who are we listening to and what are we listening to? Because God is always speaking. But does that mean we're always hearing what he has to say? Because there are a lot of voices that we tend to hear and listen to, but we want to make sure after today's study that we are hearing and listening to the voice of God. So let's go ahead and let's look at why does God speak to us? And I believe from my study, there are several reasons why he speaks to us. He wants to reveal something to us something that we need to know or something that we've been asking him for. He wants to verify his will, his, his desire for your life, what he wants to see happen, to give you peace, to direct you, and to guide you. And that's for all of us. So that, those are the reasons why I believe God speaks to us. He's always wanting to be a part of our lives. And the more he's a part of our lives, the more we know our lives are going to be going in a direction that is good and right. Just like Psalm 23 says, uh, he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Mm -hmm. And so here are a series of verses. And I want you to tune into these verses because we're going to have an interactive activity right after these series of verses that I would like for you to kind of analyze and see what God could be saying through these verses. So the first verse is Jeremiah 24, 7, and it says, Then will, I will give them a heart to know me, that I am the Lord, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God, for they shall return to me with their whole heart. Hmm. Think about that. Next, Psalm 143, verse 8 and verse, verse 1 and verse 8. Hear my prayer, O Lord, this is David speaking. Give ear to my supplications. In your faithfulness, answer me, and in your righteousness, cause me to hear your loving kindness in the morning. For in you do I trust. Cause me to know the way in which I should walk. For I lift up my soul to you. These are some good words when it comes to how we hear the voice of God and when we want to hear the voice of God. Romans 8, 14 says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God, or the children of God. And that, that can be how that's interpreted. Jeremiah 33, 3, Call to me, and I will answer you, this is the Lord speaking, and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. We have some great and precious promises found in the Bible that helps us to know that God will speak to us when we ask him to speak. Matthew 17, 5. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And suddenly a voice came out of the cloud saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And look at the last two words that the Father himself says to those who could hear when Jesus came out of the water being baptized. He says, hear him. So whatever Jesus was about to say after that baptism, people needed to hear it. Now, with those verses said, this is what I would like for you to do. And I would like you to grab your Bibles. And for those who are online, grab your Bibles because this is a Bible study. Now, just, just to clarify, in Matthew 17, we just were, that was actually the transfiguration. Oh, right? yes, yes, yes. I am so sorry. Yes, that was. That was 
when Peter, James, James and, and John were up. And this is when the voice of God came and spoke only to them. Thank you for that clarification. Amen. Yes, thank you. But we definitely don't want to go forward with misinterpretation. Mm -hmm. All right, so with our interactive activity, grab your Bibles, and I want you to consider the verses I just showed you. Which verse do you think is for which purpose? Which verse do you think is for which purpose? Okay. Now, I'm going to go back to the purposes in which God speaks to us. And I thought I had created a slide with that. So here we go. Which verse is for which purpose? Well, we're going to need to see the verses. They're going to need to see the verses. Oh, okay. To reveal what is God speaking for? Jeremiah 24, 7. Why is he talking? What can we get from this? Is God trying to guide us when we read this verse? Is he trying to reveal his will to us? Is he trying to direct our path? So these verses, what do you think God is trying to do for the reader, which is us and anyone who chooses to pick up his word? When they read these promises, when they read these words, what is God promising us that he will do for us in speaking to us? Is he going to guide us? Is he going to reveal something to us? Is he going to direct his will in our lives? So go ahead and look at these verses. Maybe one stood out to you the most, and that's the one you want to focus on. But I want to hear from you. What is God saying to us through these verses? Well, Jeremiah 24, 7 says, I'll give them a heart to know me, that I'm the Lord, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God. But they shall return to me. With their whole heart and so when i'm saying that verse i mean right there in that first clause i will give them a heart to know me mm -hmm. he wants us to know him the lord is not a even though he's amazing and a lot of it because he is a mystery by nature because he's greater than us he's bigger than us but that's not how he wants to stay mm -hmm. it's like if you think about you know um you go to the store and you know especially this time of year people be going to the store to get gifts you know, sometimes you go to the store and it'll be like those gifts in those clamshells, like a lot of plastic around it. Whether it's like a, a game or whether it's like a camera, a toy camera like that Jael wanted. And there's just a lot of plastic. You got to go through a lot of unwrapping to get to it. But they don't put that wrapping on there so it won't be bought. All that wrapping is on it because it's so valuable that they don't want it to get damaged. They don't want it to get stolen. So they put a lot of plastic around it so that when you get it, because you bought it, you can enjoy it. Nobody else can have it. So it's kind of like when he says, I want to give them a heart to know me. Yes, because he has all these layers of plastic around him, so to speak. And there's all these things that make him God. We're not. But he's done that to show his greatness. He's done that to show his value. And he's saying, I want to be just for faith. I want to be just for Christar so that when she gets me, there's nothing broken. There's no parts or pieces missing. She gets all of me. So he wants us to know who he is, in spite of how far we might be from him because we're sinners. So he wants to reveal himself to us. Mm -hmm. So this verse helps us to know that, does God really want me to know who he is? Does God really want to speak to me mm -hmm. so I can better understand who he is? Yes, Jeremiah 24, 7 can definitely help us to know that God wants to answer. What about you, Faith? Which verse did you look up and you, I, I think God is saying this. We can go to that verse once you say which one you want. Can you, can you go back to the list? Here are, here are the, here's Romans. the list right here. No, I'm, talk, I'm talking about the- um, The actual verse? No, the, the what, what we're trying to find in each verse. What's like the it's purpose? Revealing. So yeah. we're trying to know what's the purpose? What is God saying to someone verse? when they read that particular verse? So you could choose any one of these verses. It may be something that's not in this list, but we definitely know that these verses are verses that encourages us that God does speak to us. These verses encourage us to know God wants to say something to us. So which one of these verses speaks to you and gives you direction on how God wants to speak to you? And Christara, we were waiting on you too. I have Matthew. Okay. Jeremiah 33 3 is saying how he wants to reveal. So Jeremiah 33 3. Mm -hmm. And can you read that verse again? 
Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things, which thou knowest not. That's very, very clear. I will show you great and mighty things, which thou knowest not. So when we, when we call on the Lord, we can be guaranteed that he's going to speak in return. And sometimes he doesn't speak with words. Sometimes he speaks with action. He speaks by showing us things, revealing things to us, and helping us to understand that he's a part of our lives. And this verse, Jeremiah 33, definitely gives us a, a promise that he will do this. So what about you, Christar? I chose Matthew 17, 5. Matthew 17, 5. And, um, and what does it say? I think there the, it is. the purpose of it is to... I speak up soon. They can hear us. They can hear. And the, I can't hear you. <laughs> the purpose of the verse is basically God putting... when You know when candidates and they have somebody say... You should listen to this person. I stand behind them. Mm -hmm. Whatever you call those people. Oh, like, like their promoters, their campaign. Um, no, just just when somebody says, like a, a popular person oh, says, um, their publicist. No, no, somebody who's who's um, they are endorsing. Endorse. Their, yeah, they're like endorsing product, yeah. this candidate. Uh, mm -hmm. okay. It was like God was endorsing Jesus when He came, and He was like, okay. You can trust this person, listen to them. It's almost like a campaign commercial that you can say, I support so-and-so yes. or mm -hmm. send it or whatever. Mm -hmm. Wow. Right. So, wow. Thank you. That's a very powerful point. So, <laughs> so the Lord is willing to endorse his will in your life, right? He's willing to speak to you and say, you're going in the right direction, Christar. This is exactly where I want you to be. This is exactly what I want you to be doing. This is a part of my will for you. He speaks to us to let us know that I'm confirming, I'm affirming where you are and what you're doing. And this is one of those verses that will contribute to that. Yes, Faith? Romans 8. Romans 8. 14. Romans 8, 14. I think it's talking about guiding. Romans 8, 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. Yes. Wow. So if we are children of God, we will be led by him. Wow. And one of the ways that we're led by him is by listening to him. Mm -hmm. We listen to him. Therefore, we know where to go, what to do. And we, we don't feel lost. We don't feel insecure because we're being led by his spirit. Well, this is personal, too, because mm -hmm. a lot even worldly people will say, you know, whatever luck would have or the hand of providence, whatever. They know that there's something in control of, of our existence beyond us. And so as Christians, we know that that's God as a creator. But this is like a fringe benefit to being a Christian because there are a lot of reasons that people say, well, it's hard being a believer or whatever. This is a benefit. The fact that you don't have to walk, you're led. You don't have to figure it out on your own. You don't have to chart your own course. Doesn't mean you don't have a free will, but when you know I need to get to a, such a point that he's going to lead me to that point. That for me is comforting, even as an adult. You know, because I guess when you kind of reach a certain age, you want to just do your own thing. I want to be able to say what I want to do. And it's like the older I'm getting, the more I I don't want to do my own thing. I really want to be led because time is precious. And I know I want to, I trust him way more than I trust myself. And yeah. this is a Romans 8, 14. It's like a, a fringe benefit. Yes. You have another one? Mm. Good. I want like participation from faith for that. Which verse? Um, Psalm 143, 1 and 8. Psalm 143, okay. verse 1 and verse 8. I think it's talking about verifying his will in uh, the, somebody's life or okay. our lives. So it says, hear my prayer, O Lord, give ear to my supplications. In your faithfulness, answer me and in your righteousness. Cause me to hear your loving kindness in the morning, and for in you do I trust. Cause me to know the way in which I shall walk, for I lift up my soul to you. So this is definitely something we know that David had a walk with the Lord, right? Yeah. The Bible says he's a man. He was a man after God's own heart. He knew how to talk to the Lord and he knew when the Lord was talking back to him. So when we go to the Lord and we ask him, he's asking him for quite a few things in here. Right. That's what I was about to say. When you look at verse eight, cause me to know the way therein I should walk. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's pretty explicit. Tell me what I should do. Yes. And a lot of times we make people heroes because we think it was something that they did.
They were instruments. But the reason why they seemed to be in the right place at the right time most of the time mm -hmm. was because that's where he was led to be. And every time he ended up messing up, it was because that's where he wanted to be. Mm -hmm. And so this is a powerful prayer to say, this is the secret sauce right here, to be a real hero, to really be great. It's not to have this great mind and figure stuff out. It's like to have just the heart of God to say, Lord, you just tell me where I'm supposed to be. And that's what I want. And I like what David says in this verse two, faith, because it says, he says, in your faithfulness, answer me. That means you've been faithful in the past. Please continue to be faithful now. Mm -hmm. You've always answered me. Please continue to be faithful now. And girls and everyone listening, I want us to remember that when we desire to hear from the Lord, he is faithful to speak. Mm. He is faithful to respond. We just have to learn, which we're going to get into a lot of that. We just have to learn how to hear his voice. Because it's in his faithfulness and it's in his righteousness that we are heard. Not yes. because of our faithfulness or our righteousness. Yes. So we're going to go and move on. Thank you so much. And for those who are able to look up the verses, we can find so many promises that God is willing to speak to us and he's always ready and a lot of times he's already speaking wow. but not all the time are we in position to hear and so beyond that interactive activity and i'm looking at those verses let's look a little bit on how does god speak to us there are two things i want to bring up he speaks to us through his word, which we just finished exploring. We read several verses through his word, and we already heard words to encourage us. Literally. <laughs> and he speaks through his Holy Spirit. Remember when Jesus was leaving and he, he encouraged his followers? He said, don't worry. There's someone greater coming after me. And it will be the comforter, meaning he won't just be beside you. He will be in you. And just like that verse told us, if we are a part of the family of God, if we, if we are a follower of God, we can possess his spirit. His spirit will speak to us and will let us know which way to go. So there are two major ways God likes to speak through us or to us. Mm. I want you to consider this. As a teacher, I constantly remind my students this important fact. Listen and silent have the same letters for a reason. Mm. Listen and silent have the same re letters for a reason. Why? Because in order to listen, you have to be quiet. You have to be silent. Because sometimes the, our world gets too noisy and we're drowning out his voice. And we just cannot hear what he has to say. So consider this important, important poster. Let's think about this. My voice or God's voice? How can we tell the difference? And I know this is the number one question so question. many people ask. Because when you get quiet. Are, are you, you hearing you're... yourself? Right. Or is this the or Lord? Are you hearing the Lord? Yeah. Well, I'm going to say, and I'm going to encourage you girls, I'm going to encourage everyone, don't worry about that. There are some ways that you can follow, some steps that you can follow to help you to know whether or not the voice you're hearing is the voice of the Lord. And it very well could sound like your voice, but look at this. God always speaks according to his word. So. Maybe you just finished reading Jeremiah 33, 3. And Jeremiah 33, 3 was coming back to your mind. But you're hearing your voice. But whose word is it? Mm. It's still God's word, even though it came sounding like your own voice. So it's not so much as important as who's, who's speaking, who is speaking, what is it's being the, said. Yes, what's and what's the said? source? What's the source of What's the source? If God's word is the source, even if you have a friend to come to you, and that friend is quoting scripture. Mm -hmm. We can't say it's the friend speaking to us. What we can't say it's the friend the guiding us. Yeah. We have to acknowledge it is the Lord guiding us because it's only the friend 
being a tool to share God's word with us. Man, that's powerful because that just shows you why it's important to know the word. Yes. Because that's your that's your guide, that's your standard. But to know whether or not this spirit or this person that's impressing me or I'm hearing, how do I know if this is really right? You got to know the word. I mean, there's, there's no other way around it. And I also want to say, I know something the Lord has been impressing upon me. I'm going to say that a lot because that's some of the ways that he speaks to us. He impresses us with his spirit to do good things for others. And sometimes he will have me pick up my phone, get a Bible verse and send it to a particular person. Maybe somebody texted me and said, I'm going through a certain thing. Can you pray for me? And then he says, Send them a scripture to let them know I am with them. Mm. Send them a particular verse to let them know they can trust me with their problem. Yeah. Even though they've reached out to you, let them know that they can reach out to me. That's really what we try to do every day. Exactly. Whether sending out something with Change Ministry or sending out a text or even doing a study. Yes. We're really not trying to say as much as what we want to say, but what is it more that you're trying to say to this person? Mm -hmm. So that's something that everybody should be doing no matter what. Yes, it is a good thing to do. So that you can be that voice of God's word to someone else. If our thoughts or our head voice, we call it our head voice, because sometimes we just have thoughts running through our heads. <laughs> they are not of God. Wow. They are not from God, they're us. So it's thoughts thought of worry. It's not his thought. No, because sometimes we wake up in the morning with thoughts of worry, mm -hmm. thoughts of things I want to get done, or thoughts of people, or sometimes thoughts that came from who knows where. And we call it our head voice. If, if it's according to his ver word, then we know it is his will. But worry is never a part of God's will. Right. There are no verses it in the says, Bible. says, let not your it. heart be troubled. <laughs> right. Neither let it be afraid. So if thoughts of fear, thoughts of worry, thoughts of confusion are coming to our minds, God, the Bible says that God is not the author of confusion. Mm. He is the author of peace. So we already know the battle is over and trying to determine who's speaking. Because this voice is now going away from God's word. Exactly. So sometimes let's, let's, make, let's make a great situation where we know, okay, God is telling me to read the Bible. Okay, that, that's probably the Lord. But I hear a voice telling me, okay, don't declare that uh, on that statement so that you won't have to get a uh, charge for that. Or don't tell someone this or that so that you can use that for good. You know, you can argue sometimes well, should I do this? Should I not do this? And when it comes to those gray areas that aren't necessarily impure, but they're incorrect. They're, well, they're not consistent with what the Bible is saying. Well, what we're what he I'm hearing that? is compromise. compromise. We are not to compromise on God's word. Mm -hmm. We are to stand firm on God's word. Because when you talk about that head voice, sometimes the head voice will get, because if the head voice starts to over speak the, or, or overtake the word voice, it'll make you rationalize some things that no, that's 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 not really a way to go. So we're going to get to that. We're going yeah. to get to that exact point okay, because yeah. we are going to get to the point to where we're going to see that the voices we're hearing should be God's voice continually. Mm -hmm. If we're constantly battling our voice versus God's voice, then we have a ways to go in connecting and relating to him. Wow, that's not a God issue. That's an issue. No, it's, a, it's, a, it's an us issue. It's mm. a it's a heart issue. Mm. So if our thoughts are from our own emotions and desires, then it would be good to hear good to hear what God has to say. So if you're waking up with feeling sad or feeling confused or feeling lonely or feeling angry, upset, go to the Lord and he will speak words of encouragement to you. Mm. We are not supposed to say, oh, I woke up with this terrible thought of being afraid today. Well, that's a reality. Right. Well, go to God's word and let him speak words of peace to you mm -hmm. so that as you go throughout your day, he can give you that peace. So a Christian doesn't really lament. You're going to always have the head voice because we always have our free will. And he does not take that from us right. to where it's like, I can't think for myself. But we just have to make sure that our head voice is not our last word. That, and that's not what we make our decision on. And that's why we are to be honest with where we are and what we are hearing and align it with God's word. Mm -hmm. Well, Lord, this is where I am this morning. I know there are mornings where I have spent at least, probably at the most, 30 minutes trying to get out of my head all the things that are running through my head just so that I can hear him. And sometimes we have to do that. And I feel like I'm just putting it all on him 
so that he can put in me what he wants to be in my mind. And it makes a difference in my day. It really makes a difference in my day when I sit and listen in silence and all these thoughts running through my head and I know they're from me. There's no doubt they're not from God. I have to give him all of that. And I want to encourage you when you wake up in the morning and your first thoughts are not of God, give him all of those things and let him replace it with his peace and his guidance. And that timing is biblical because I think with Psalm 143, we, he literally said, cause me in the morning. Yes. Because that's where most of us start. That's when we day. start our day. Mm -hmm. And we need to start to start with his word. Wow. Now, look, we just said all of that. But doesn't the world say, listen to my heart? Listen to my heart, right? Absolutely. Just listen to your heart. Whatever your heart tells you to do, do it. Do it. Just listen to your heart. Put the earphones on and just see what your heart is telling you to do. Well, I know there's a verse that says that my heart is deceitfully wicked above all, above all things. things. And who can know it? That means you don't even know some of the things that can come out of your heart. Wow. Your heart can tell you, you need to go and you need to go and get to know that guy. Mm. Isn't he handsome? Mm. But that's not, that doesn't mean that's what God is saying. Mm. Your heart could be telling you, I really, really want to go and give them this money. Mm. But that doesn't mean that's what God is telling you to do. Mm. We can't always trust our hearts. We are to trust God's word. Mm. And his word will lead us to what's right. Well, everything that we do is going to have got something from a scripture on it. Or a scripture is going to tell us exactly what to go do. No, 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 no. His word is where, is where it starts. Mm -hmm. And then he will start to guide us with his peace. Because mm -hmm. I know if I were to have followed my heart on so many things, I would not have been in a place of peace. Mm -hmm. But I don't follow my heart anymore. Because mm -hmm. I'm telling you, in the flesh, you follow your heart. Mm -hmm. Because people tell you, what's your gut telling you to do? What's your heart telling you to do? And I can't trust me anymore. I have to pray and ask God, guide me, Lord. This is what I want to do, but I want to be assured this is what you want me to do. So in a real way, like as I just listened to you share, and this is really important for, you know, because I know we have young people here. You are growing up. But what it really means to grow up in God is to grow deeper in him. And you don't become less dependent on that voice. You actually become more dependent. You become more reliant. You don't get self-reliant. When the whole world's telling you, I'm 18, I'm 19, you should be able to do everything you want. Well, that's what the world says. Just like the world says, follow your heart. Because that's what the heart wants to do. The heart doesn't want to be on its own at 18. The heart wants to be on its own, on its own in 18 minutes. That baby wants what it wants, regardless of what mom is feeling like, regardless if dad is there or not. That's how we naturally are. But what the voice of God is, is not something that should get quieter because oh, you already know what to do. It's actually the voice that gets louder the closer you get to him and you become more dependent. And people are confused because you're getting greater. You're bearing more fruit. But it's not because of you. It's because you're more reliant. You are more dependent on the voice of God leading your life. But I can guarantee this to be true. The more you follow God's will, the more peace you will have. The more you follow your heart, only one side of you will be satisfied. But there will be a dissatisfaction that follows you. And you will not be able to deny it. You will know this is not fulfilling. When you're listening to yourself. When you're listening to your heart, when you're listening to yourself, the flesh will be satisfied. But there's more than we have in the flesh. Everybody has some desire in them to be fulfilled wholly, to be wholly fulfilled. And only when you're following the Lord will you have that peace, that passing, all understanding, because you are following the right way. And it's something that I cannot help you to know and understand. It's only something that you can experience. And for those who have experienced it, they know there's no substitute for it. Mm -hmm. 
There's no substitute in following God's way. Mm. Consider this, counterfeit voices. This is kind of where we're leading now. We talked about our own counterfeit voices. Now let's talk about the counterfeit voices in this world, around us. Our first instinct is to go to other people for advice or help in making a decision. Some of us have people in our lives that we can go to receive godly counsel, which is a blessing, and they promise to pray for us, which is a blessing, and they pray with us, which is a blessing, and they are very valuable. Mm -hmm. You are not to let those people go out of your lives. They are the ones that you are to hold and keep close beside you. But it is vital, important that we go to God first. Even when we have these godly individuals around us, it is important if we value getting to know the voice of God, we are not to put him second or third or last after we've exhausted all the people we know. Oh, well, I better talk to God about it then. Mm -hmm. He is to be first and he will be the one guiding your steps, bringing people into your path so that your heart can be convicted on what is right. That's kind of a telltale sign if you have not talked to the Lord about it first. Mm -hmm. It's pretty hard to then say, this is what God wants me to do. Yes. This is probably a situation, this is what I want to do. It could be good or bad. Not everything we want to do is inherently bad. Mm -hmm. It's just not his will. Yes. It's just not his time or it's just not his plan. But this is deep, the high air of talking to him first. That's important. Yes. And that's why I had to underscore that. So here are some Bible references to beware of bad counsel. We kind of covered this when we were talking about friends a little bit. But now we're kind of revisiting it when it comes to guiding, having a guiding voice in our lives. Look at some of these verses and just kind of skim them with me. And I'll pick out one or two to read. Or maybe some of uh, Faith can read one or Kassar can read one. Psalms 1, 1 through, well, this is verse 1. Blessed, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. There will be those who are ungodly who will try and tell you the right way to go. And can we just define, define what ungodly means? Ungodly, ungodly does not mean a bad person. Please know that. Because most of us don't deal with drug dealers, thugs, traffickers, you know, and criminals. Most people don't deal with people like that. But what is ungodly? It's simply someone who is not in touch with the one as a Christian that I want to follow. They just, they're on a different channel. They're not godly. They're not connected to him. So what they're telling me, is, God bless them, is sincere. They want to see me be happy. They want to do what hopefully is right. But if this person is not a believer, it doesn't mean they got to be walking around with a Bible in their hand. But you know this is not a Christian. This person does not have an awareness of Jesus Christ or his righteousness in their lives. I probably don't want to make it. I don't want to pin a spiritual decision on someone who is not in touch with the one that I'm claiming to follow. Well, let me say something. I was going to do this afterwards, mm. but let me read this. Yeah. Unwise counselors make little or no mention of God and his word. Mm. And like, like um, Daddy just said, it's not that they are bad people. They're just unwise. People who give you counsel with God's word is showing signs of wisdom. Their advice will be based off of what they think and not what God thinks. We don't need to take counsel on people who are just giving us thoughts on what they think. That should not be your, be your final stop. Your final stop should be God's word and what he says. Another thing, there will be an absence of prayer. Whoever is this ungodly person, they're not going to bring prayer into the situation. They're going to bring you taking action into the situation. You taking matters into your own hands not putting them in the hands of a of a higher a higher power that only that's the power that only you can trust 
they may display a subtle defensiveness about using scripture for guidance. When you mention, well, I just, I'm trying to figure out what the Bible says. Oh, you don't need the Bible? What is the Bible going to tell you? The Bible is just going to say all these words that really you don't even understand. Just go ahead and do this, this, and this. They may suggest actions that are not scriptural. So you upset with somebody. You don't know what to do. You don't know if you are supposed to go and confront them or just let it go. And they say, I wouldn't forgive them if I were you. If they've already done it to you three times, I wouldn't forgive them. Or I would just go and just give them a piece of my mind. I would just go and just say all that you're thinking, let it all out and you'll feel better. That's not God's way. That's not scriptural. Mm -hmm. Unwise counselors may be very critical of Christian leaders or godly people in your life. They're the ones who are saying, why are you listening to them? The only thing they're going to do is pray. Why are you listening to them? They're always telling you what you can't do. They're not ever telling you what you can do. They're only going to just preach to you. We are not to listen to people like that. They are ungodly counselors. And God is saying, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. And not even to mention, don't stand with sinners. Don't stand with people who are outright sinning against the Father. Then don't sit with people who are scornful. They're bitter. They're always complaining. They're always speaking bad things about other people. Don't sit and hang out with people like that. Bless is the man who don't have company with these kinds of people. And I think this is great counsel. Amen. Jeremiah 7, 24, Ephesians 5, 11, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them, meaning get them away from you. Genesis 3, 1 through 24, this is when Lucifer came as a serpent to Eve and just started to give her counsel. Do you know how many people comes under the cloak yeah. of somebody wise? And they're trying to give counsel, but their counsel is leading you far, 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 far away from God. Mm -hmm. And you can't even hear his voice. You're so far away. And then Romans 12, 2, be not conformed to this world, but be renewed by your mind that you may be able to prove what is a good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind, mm -hmm. meaning that a real change. We talk about change of heart. Really. This is where the Lord works. This is where he starts. Mm -hmm. A changed mind. And so this is where the battle is, but it's also where the victory is. Yes. That's why our mind, where it is and where it isn't, is so important as to whether or not we're able to actually do or even hear what God has to say. Yes, I agree. Mm -hmm. So, getting a little slump, or slump in your chairs, here's another interactive. But this time, I want us to look at a particular story. And this story cannot be any more clear. I know when we're talking with the students at school, especially the older ones, and we read a Bible story, that it almost always I hear this comment. That happened in the Bible? Yeah, it happened in the Bible. If we actually open up God's word and start reading it, we will see more than we thought we would see when we start looking at the events of the people who are mentioned in the Bible and the, some of the things they did and what God did in response to it. So let's look at Rehoboam, the son of King Solomon in 1 Kings 12. And what I want you to do when you look at that, 1 Kings chapter 12, and we just look at the whole chapter, skip however often you need to, but these are the things we're looking for right here. Who needed counsel? Who did they go to? Who did they listen to? What were the results? And the biggest question is, did they go to God? Let's look at it right quick. First Kings chapter 12, looking at King Rehoboam. Solomon has died and now Rehoboam is now reigning in his stead. 1143 tells us. And then the verse one tells us, and Rehoboam went to Shechem, for all Israel were to come to Shechem to make him king. So we know this as the inauguration, right? The, right. Mm -hmm. the ceremony where the king is crowned um, as new king. But if you read there, you keep reading, there's a certain person who had been sent away by King Solomon. He was actually told not to return 
to the kingdom for a reason. You know, there are people that your parents or people in your lives that people are saying, you don't need to, you really don't need to be hanging out with them. You really don't need to be calling them and talking to them. When they call you, you don't, you don't need to, you don't really need to be having conversations with them. There's a reason why people say this, because the people are just, these people are just not going to lead you in the right direction. So, I have you picked out who that person is. That person that was sent away from the kingdom was who? Looks like Jeroboam. Right, Jeroboam. Oh. Jeroboam. He was actually dwelling in Egypt. Wow. He had gone way on to Egypt. And oh, yeah. we heard enough about Egypt during our study the last two weeks yeah. to know that not too much, not too much of the godly things were <laughs> happening in Egypt. Wow. But this is where Jeroboam was coming. And guess what? He heard King Solomon had died. Mm. And now he's hearing that his son is reigning in his stead. And he said, hmm, I'm going to go back. And I'm going to, I have a plan. Mm. And let's see what his plan was. Because our question is, who needed counsel? Well, Rehoboam needed counsel because something happened when Jeroboam came to Shechem when it was time for Rehoboam to be uh, crowned king. And what happened? It says there, it looks like Rehoboam right. was consulting. He said to them, depart yet for three days, then come again to me. Mm -mm, verse 3. And we can look at verse 3. I'm sorry, verse 3. Forgive mm -hmm. me. 2 Kings, 1 Kings 12, 3. And they sent and called him. And so this is Rehoboam calling. Calling the congregation as they are getting ready to just kind of Celebrating this whole act of a new king being crowned. Okay. And Jeroboam and all the congregation of Israel came and spake unto Rehoboam, saying. Mm -hmm. So what did they say? Hmm. They said, and this is, this is headed up by Jeroboam. Your father put a very heavy yoke on us and made things so hard for us. What are you going to do as king? You know, it's interesting, Kristara mentioned the elections and all of that going on. These are the major questions people were asking these candidates, these presidential candidates. Well, this is what this president did. Well, what about you? Are you going to do something better? Are you going to help lighten our load? Are you, what are you going to do that's different? And Rehoboam is feeling the, the stress and the pressure. I'm, I'm sure any of us would. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you got a leader, you have the whole group, the whole, the whole country, the whole country say, saying, what are, what are you gonna do differently from your father? And this is Rehoboam's response. Rehoboam said, can you go away for three days? It's something about that three. Didn't Esther say, let's pray for three yeah. days so I can have wisdom from God? Mm -hmm. But this is not what Rehoboam said. Rehoboam said, depart for three days, then come again to me. And the people obeyed. They went away. Mm -hmm. But what did King Rehoboam do? So now we have the, question, the answer to our first question. Who needed counsel? Rehoboam. Rehoboam needed counsel. Let's see who he went to. Who did he go to? The, verse 6. Verse 6 says, who did he consult, babe? The uh, old man. Oh, the old men that stood before Solomon when he lived. Mm -hmm. And he said, what should I do? What advice do you have for me? And they actually gave him advice. They gave him advice. And they said, you know, this is what I think you should do. The people will serve you if you speak good words to them. And then they will be your servants forever. Okay? If you serve them and answer them and speak good words to them, does that sound like the word of God to you? Does that sound like God's way to you? To, to speak good words, to serve your people? You are the king to serve. That sounds like God's mm -hmm. word, right? Yeah. Do I right that, by your people. Take care of your people. Listen to them. If you are a leader, you should, be the, you should be the servant among them. Wow. You should be speaking words of encouragement to them. This is literally what Jesus teaches us back in the New Testament. The old men who were around Solomon and said, hey, this is how you want to treat your people if you want your people to follow. Exactly. So he receives good counsel. Mm -hmm. But guess what? It's not good enough for him. These are old men, by the way. These are old, These are old men. Old. They have been around. They've been around the wisest man to ever live next wow. to Jesus. Mm. They were in his presence and in his kingdom. 
They saw that he was. They saw him. They saw when he was crowned king and the answer that God gave him to his prayer. But Rehoboam said, that's not good enough. He goes to some other people. And Christian, who else did he go to? Verse In verse 8. He went to young men that were growing up with him. And what did he do to the counsel of the old men? He forsook it. He forsook it. He said, nah, 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 nah. That doesn't, that doesn't satisfy me. Let me go and talk to my own peers. Let me go to the people that I grew up with. They know. They know more than you. And guess what? If they were godly young men and women, they could know just as much as the old men because they would have had the same source of wisdom. Mm -hmm. So I'm not speaking against young people don't know anything and older people know everything. I'm just speaking of the case of what source did their counsel come from? Mm -hmm. What was the source of the counsel? Mm -hmm. And that's what we have to always consider because I'm going to tell you, I have learned from kindergartners some wise things to do. Mm -hmm. I have learned from Jael, who's only seven years old, the way that I should go. God has spoken to her because of the things that she has been learning. I have learned from you girls. And I be are, what, three times older than you. But this counsel was, <laughs> you shall speak to the people and say this, your father, my father made your yoke heavy, and I am going to make your yoke even heavier. Where my father chastised you with wits, verse 11, I will chastise you with scorpions. They said, get even harder on them. Raise the taxes. Make them serve you more. Have them build things for you. Let them know who's boss. Let them know who's boss. Isn't it time for you to stand up and make yourself known? Assert your authority. Assert your authority. You don't need to be a servant. You need to be leader. Everybody needs to listen to you. And everybody needs to come to you. And guess what? Guess whose counsel he took? Ugh. He listened to the counsel of his peers. And when he did that, if you were to read, just take your Bibles in your own time and read what the results were. They were not good. When he took that route, the results were not good. But the biggest question I'm asking, which is the last question on the screen, did he go to God? No. It is not recorded that he went to God at all. And it's proof. Yeah, because if he went to God, God, it's promised we will know the way. Mm. God was the God of Israel. And the only thing he needed to do was do what his father did. When King Solomon took the, 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 crown, the, <laughs> took the, crown, the crown and the throne, and the throne after David died, the first thing King Solomon asked, was the Lord. He said, Lord, just help me be a good leader. And God said, I'll do more than that. I will not only make you a good leader, I'll make you wise, I'll make you rich, and nothing will be more beautiful than your kingdom. God gave him more than what he asked for. We are not to deny God's opportunity to speak to us. We are to give him his time. Give them this opportunity. Let's stop going to other people, asking them what they think when we have the Lord right here with us and for us to guide us in the right way. Wow. And why, the results are going to be so good. Yeah. Why, why would we just depend on what other people think when we can go by what our creator knows? Yes. Don't live on thinking. Live on this is my plan for you. I, this verse, Psalm 1, 1, blesses the man that walketh not in the counsel. Look, you're walking first with people who are ungodly. And you just say, well, I'm just walking with them. That doesn't mean I believe what they believe. But then if you keep going, you're going to find yourself standing with them. 
Not just walking with them and you go your separate way, but then you'll find yourself standing with them. And if you're not careful, you'll find yourself sitting with them, doing what they do, saying what they say, going where they go, and believing what they believe. Blessed is the man who stays away from this. But check this out. Blessed is the man and his delight is in the law of the Lord. It's the same way, except God does the opposite. He takes us from a, a sitting position. We're sitting. We don't know what to do. Lord, help me. Kneeling, even. Kneeling, <laughs> yes. And Praise then the he gets oh. us to stand. We stand. stand like a tree yes. by the rivers of water. And then he gets us going forward, producing fruit, showing that our lives are being led by him. Whatsoever he doeth, or wheresoever he or she goes, it will prosper. will prosper. Rehoboam didn't prosper as a king. If he would have listened to the old men, given the advice that was godly, he would have prospered as a king. But he chose to listen to the wrong, the counterfeit voices. And that's a very serious thing. God wants to convict us. And the Bible says when God is speaking to us, he has his spirit waiting to give us the assurance. This is the right way. He wants to assure us this is the right way. He wants to convict our hearts of whatever is wrong and lead us in the way everlasting. This way is not always easy. So don't wait for things to be easy when God speaks to us. Sometimes he's going to ask us and tell us to do something that's quite hard. But he has promised to be with us. This way is not always easy. That's why we need a conviction from his spirit to fuel us to obey and stay on the path of righteousness. It's our fuel. The spirit is our fuel to keep going. Because the spirit will keep guiding us, even when it's difficult. John 3, 8 says, I love this verse, because every time I think about, wow, wow, Lord, I didn't even know what to say. I didn't even know what to do. And you just told me. This is, it's like the wind blowing. You can't see where the wind is coming from, but you feel the results of the wind. And then you don't even see the wind go. But you know it came because you felt the results of the wind. Mm -hmm. And then you just see it leave. And sometimes it just stays. Mm -hmm. And I love that because this is everyone born of the Spirit. You don't know when it's coming. You just experience it. You just experience it. And because of your experience, you get to the point where you start expecting it. Yes. And, and when you get to the point of expecting it, God is so happy. Because he is faithful, as David said, and he will come through every time. 1 John 4, 1 through 8 starts off with, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they be of God. So you can even say, Beloved, believe not every voice. Yes. Head voice, not. voice on TV, voice in a Bible study. Test it. You test it. Yes. How yeah. do we test it? You are, because there are many false prophets that have gone out into the world. But by this, you know, the spirit of God, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus Christ, walk away, walk away. Mm. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, meaning the one that is against Christ, which you have heard was coming and now is already in the world. You are of God, little children. And have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he that is in the world. God wants to be in you. And when he's in you, you don't have to fear anything outside in this world. Mm -hmm. He will speak and lead you and guide you. If I could just emphasize yes. that, that's where it goes from just because then we were talking about emphasizing knowing the word. Then there are people who make it their job and say, I got to memorize all these Bible verses. or I got to understand all these deep thoughts. The whole point is really trying to digest or, or take in the spirit of God, the presence of God, so that in you now, yes, I know scripture, but what about the person who's just starting the journey? Someone who doesn't know a lot about the Bible. There's hope because the Bible says this is really all about the spirit being in us, his presence being in us. Now, that's also going to be consistent with what's written, but don't think the more that you know this written, then the, the, the more I know how to go. Mm -hmm. That's like assuming that the person who has the most maps never gets lost. Mm -hmm. It's not how many maps you have. It's the person who's willing to follow the map, 
that they have. Mm -hmm. And so this is why I love this verse. I'm glad that, that this is a part of the study. And I, 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 the, I, the last thing I want to say about this is God is love. Mm -hmm. He loves us. Yeah. And when he speaks to us, he's going to be patient in his speaking. He's not mm -hmm. going to be frustrated in his, and he's not going to be impatient. If he speaks, he's going to keep speaking. Mm -hmm. He's going to keep speaking until he knows you've heard him. And either we are going to accept what he has to say or reject what he has to say. God is love. And don't worry whether or not he's going to speak to you again if he spoke to you once. He will speak. He will continue to speak. But you are children of God. It says you're children of God. But listen, I have these headphones, right? And now I'm tuned in to the voice of God. Totally, totally. I'm tuned in to the voice of God. You can guarantee once you get to the point to where you tuned into the voice of God, there are things that are going to come to distract you. Well, maybe you... There are all kinds of ways you can, you know, you have the, 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 here, you know, the headphones where it's like crowd, it's like taking out all kinds of sounds and you just hearing God, he's just speaking to you, you knowing which way to go. He's telling you what to do. He's revealing his will to you. And the only sound going in is his sound, his voice. But then before you, you see so many distractions. One of the biggest distractions for us hearing the voice of God is what you see in this picture. You got two things in this picture. One, and that is technology. Technology is one of the biggest distractions today. I mean, hands down. You can talk to Christians, you can talk to non-Christians, you can talk to people who don't even wanna have anything to do with God, and they will tell you, I don't have a cell phone, because I'm, I'm not touching those things. We just watched a documentary of someone who doesn't even proclaim God, but they are a prolific writer. And they said, I will never pick up one of those things. I don't even own a cell phone. And they have lots of money. So why would somebody with a lot of money not buy the latest iPhone? Why would somebody with a lot of money choose to let go of something that connects them with so many things in this world? And I believe they saw that this thing is distracting them from the thing they want to do most whatever that thing is. Mm. There's another thing happening in this picture. And in this picture, and we can show the picture on the screen. In this picture, this little boy is sleepy. Mm. Our lack of rest can really, really, really cause us not to hear what the Lord has to say to us. We're tired, we're sleepy, we're going, with zoning out. And the Bible even tells us that we are to be sober and vigilant against the enemy. And sober doesn't always mean we are drunk with wine. Right. Sober can mean we are sleepy and tired and our minds are not strong. When we're sleep deprived, actually, scientists have shown that the brain functions just as if, just like the brain functions when you drink alcohol. Um, fatigue or to the point of being that sleepy, it's physiologically, it's the exact same thing. Yes. And so you talk about being distracted, being asleep. When you get quiet, and a lot of times people say, oh, no, the enemy, he's just trying to get me from prayer. Maybe so. I'm pretty sure he's not, not attacking you. But a lot of times we can't just sit and be quiet because what happens? When we sit and get quiet, we go to sleep mm -hmm. because we're that tired. And we can't even be awake to hear what the Lord has to say. Because if we are listening, things should be silent. Mm -hmm. But even if you have a whole lot of things going around you, God can still give you that silent moment to just listen. Mm -hmm. He knows how to tune things out when he really wants to say things to you. Mm -hmm. Another distraction, mm -hmm. what we eat. What we eat mm -hmm. can really pose to wreak havoc on our thinking. Mm -hmm. That's why we take the time to show you healthy ways of eating. Yeah. Because when you are eating healthy, your mind is clear. Yeah. Do you know we, we just finished, finished spending two weeks talking about people who worship the enemy. Mm -hmm. Most people who worship the enemy are vegan vegetarians. Mm -hmm. Why? So when they go and they want to start talking to these evil spirits, they don't want anything interrupting the transmission between that evil spirit and what it has to say and what they hear. 
Why can't it be the same for us? Mm. We too have to have clear minds so that we can hear what the Lord is saying. Now, the Lord is powerful. He knows how to reach somebody with a drunken mind right. if he really wants them to hear and they got to hear it. But someone who's seeking to have a consistent relationship where they are learning the voice of God and depending on him to lead them every single day, we have to make sure that we're not allowing even the foods that we eat to cloud our thinking wow. so that we can hear his voice. Amen. Amen. Lastly, this is another distraction, and we've already talked about this. Media, technology, entertainment. This also can wreak havoc on us hearing the voice of God. But I would even like to distinguish between the two, because if you see technology as the thing or the hardware, you could not have that technology, but still on some level be exposed to media. Yes. Not so much the media, media being but books media and... is, is, is information. Mm -hmm. It's just information and stuff whether it's facts, whether it's fiction, whatever. But when I think, when, as I see sharing, I'm thinking of information. Yes. Just alternative sources of information outside of this book. Yes, yes. So anything, I mean, we're constantly seeing people walk around. I mean, we have it in our household. Have constantly seeing people walk around with these white little things in their ears. And you thinking they're hearing you, but they're not. They're busy listening to something they're busy talking to somebody. You wouldn't know it. And yeah. until they turn to the side and you see this white little line coming from their ear, mm -hmm. you're thinking they're totally coherent on what you're saying. Mm -hmm. But they're not. These little things, which are very expensive. And then we have entertainment. I didn't get a chance to mention that. Entertainment and how we choose to have our minds uh, engaged, or stimulated or engaged in something. We, we have studied so many times the, the whole genius mind of how people get us to do things that we want them, that they want us to do. And we have to watch what we watch and to make sure that we're not victims of entertainment. That we're not victims of what people are saying. They don't know I'm putting this in their heads, but I'm putting this in their heads. Mm -hmm. And they're actually images and distractions for what God wants us to be thinking about and what he wants to say to us. Or not even not images, sounds. Sounds. Ideas, concepts, because then we're talking about music. It's yes. It's media, media. Yes. So consider this. We're down to our closing. We have to take time to hear him. Here's a story, a story of a man. And I wouldn't be right if I didn't say a story right now. <laughs> Don't miss him speaking. There was a man who whispered, God, speak to me. And a meadow lark sang, tweet, 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 tweet. but the old man did not hear. So the man yelled, God, speak to me. And the thunder rolled across the sky. But the old man did not listen. The man looked around and said, God, let me see you. And a star shined brightly. But the man did not see. And the man shouted, God, show me a miracle. And a life was born. But the man did not notice. So the old man cried out in despair. Touch me, God, and let me know you are here. God reached down and touched the man. But the man brushed the butterfly away and walked on. We all have our ideas of what God sounds like and what he wants to do in our lives. But when we ask him to speak, be ready for anything. Mm -hmm. He will make it crystal clear. Mm -hmm. We just have to have a mind and a heart to want to hear, to want to see. To want to go. God is always speaking. 
Number one, let's not wait to listen when we need something. Don't say God speak only when you want to hear or need something from him. Take time to listen every day and get to know his voice. Learn how to discern his unique but simple voice. And the fruit of the spirit will always accompany his words. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, humility or meekness and self-control. All of this will accompany his words. At any time we are trying to, de to determine his will or discern his will, it will be encased in, those, in that fruit from his spirit. So God wants to speak to you today. Are you going to put on the earphones? You got to put on the headphones. I got the earbuds here. I got the ear pods here. Whatever you choose to put on, let his voice be the voice that you hear. And crowd out all other distractions of this world. He has something to say to you today. That's the word. That's the word. That's, that's, the, that's the word that I believe God wants us to to hear today and to encourage us because I would believe he wants to talk to each of us. You know, this is a timely message. Um, as we wrap it up, you can switch this up. Um, we need to pray because our whole country, for the world for that matter, is waiting to hear, and who knows, being sad, maybe it has already been announced who is president and who is not. Um, something as consequential, but spiritually speaking, something as inconsequential as that. Everyone's waiting for it, waiting to hear. And the reason why I say spiritually is inconsequential because it doesn't matter who's president. It has nothing to do with whether or not I'm saved. It doesn't have anything to do with whether or not I'm a son or a daughter of God. And it's important for us to recognize he is not trying to speak to us as a group. He is trying to speak to each and every one of us. Because if it was about us just being, for example, let's say our family, the five of us. If he was really just trying to speak to us as a family, then he would not have given you all ears. He would have just given me ears. But that's not what happens. With a healthy child, a healthy baby, every single person has their own set of ears, their own set of eyes, their own mouth. He wants to speak to you no matter how old you are, no matter how good you are, quote, no matter how, quote, bad you are. He wants to speak. And so I really want to pray. We want to pray that as much as we're waiting to hear words from our governor, whether or not a lockdown is lifted, or whether or not we hear who's going to be president, or whether or not we hear from a friend that we just hope they return our call so that we can feel special, that we will cut that noise off and say, Lord, speak to me. Mm -hmm. And you know what? That's not a spigot that he has to then turn on. What we've seen in this study is that it's already running. Yeah. He's already talking. He's speaking it's already. It's already talking. Now it's just a matter of, let me get quiet. And hear what he has to say. That's my prayer. Mm -hmm. If that's your prayer, we want to invite you to pray with us because we want him to speak to us today. Father, thank you so much for the chance to study the reality that you are reaching out to each one of us. And while we are anxious to hear so many things and to know so many things, what better gift do we have than to be able to say, I have a father God who loves me and cares for me, and he wants to lead me not as a Christian, not as a church member, but as a son, as a daughter, as a friend. And friends love friends. Friends lead friends into good things. Good parents lead children, even bad children. Good parents will lead them into good places. And so we are taking ourselves out of this equation, Lord, other than to simply say, Father, forgive us when we haven't listened. Forgive us when we've not been still and we have not got quiet. Today, we want to ask that you please will give us the grace, the mind, the heart to stay quiet, to speak when we are spoken to, but to speak what you have said, but that starts with us getting quiet. Right now, there's someone listening, and I know the enemy is going to try and send all the other voices, all the distractions. You've shown us through your word, Lord, that you have power over them. You call us to turn off whatever it is that we can turn off. But then when there's those voices that are crowding out you, that's when you turn up the volume. That's when you step in and you tell the enemy, 
peace be still. Be quiet because I want to have a conversation with my child. We pray for you to do that for those who are in that situation. And we are grateful now that all of us recognize that, yes, we're family, we're brothers and sisters in Christ, but every single one of us, we've got our own set of ears and help us now to all make, each make that decision every day and all day to turn them to, you, to your voice. Because as we see in 1 John 4, verse 8, that voice will always be a voice of love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.